Welcome to this coffee lecture on the delicate issue of content reuse in a thesis. Today we will try to understand the particularities of reusing different types of content and see how to request permission to reuse copyrighted content in a thesis. First of all, a few words about the PFL legal context for thesis. The ordinance on the doctorate and the directive concerning the citing and referencing sources represents the legal framework for thesis. Regarding copyright, the most important points are the fact that the author is the copyright owner of his or her thesis and that he or she is also responsible for its content. Another important uh, information for your reuse authorization request, a thesis is considered as a non-commercial publication. What is the difference between citing or quoting and reusing? Basically, quotation is a right and concerns small extracts. Reusing is not a right and concerns a complete work or an important part of it. Reusing generally requires formal authorizations from the rights holders, unless the work is under a free license. In many cases, the rights owner will be the publisher. An important point, all images, figures and graphs are considered as complete works, not as extracts. We will now review the most common cases of reuse. Let's focus first on already published content. You want to reuse an open access content released under a Creative Commons license or a CC0 or in public domain. If the Creative Commons license fits to your needs, no permission is required. If the CC license doesn't fit to your needs, ask for permission to the rights holder. If you want to reuse raw data, like numbers, formulas, etc., they are not protected by copyright and then could be reused without permission as long as you properly credit the dataset creator. But the case of datasets is complex. A dataset can be protected and some data in the dataset, for example, textual material, can be protected too. Some datasets are published under a free license, like Creative Commons, but not all of them. So, the permission request will depend on what exactly in the dataset you are interested to reuse and on the license applied to the dataset by the creator. What is the process to reuse a non-open access content? You have to ask for permission to the rights holder. And there are two main ways to do that. For articles, Permissions are usually quite easy to obtain via RightsLink. RightsLink is a product of the Copyright Clearance Center. You can access to this form directly from the article's web page through a link that reads something like rights and permission or request get permission. The structure of the form can vary a bit from a publisher to another. And at the end, when you have completed the form, you must create an account to the Copyright Clearance Center to finalize the process. These permissions can be granted for free or for a fee, and the fact that a thesis is a non-commercial publication usually implies free permission. In other cases, the permission will be requested directly to the rights holder by email, and it is important to explain your needs and the reuse context. So you will reuse the content in a thesis, which is a non-commercial publication, with a print and an online version. Now let's say that you want to reuse an unpublished content. Except for private documents, it is always recommended to reuse or cite content that is available for readers. It is therefore preferable to deposit the content in InfoScience or in an open archive. First case, if you want to reuse an accepted manuscript, and if you have not signed your publishing agreement yet, try to negotiate to reuse the content without asking permission. But if the negotiation fails, or if the contract is already signed, then request authorization to reuse the postprint. If you want to reuse a submitted manuscript, for the sake of transparency towards your publisher, it is advisable to inform him that you would like to reuse the submitted publication in your thesis. 
While some publishers may consider publication in a thesis as a prior publication, this remains a fairly rare practice and there is generally no problem. If you want to reuse a manuscript that is not submitted yet, and if the journal is already chosen, it is important to check the publisher's self-archiving conditions. Generally, depositing a preprint in InfoScience or in a preprint server like Archive is authorized. Regarding internal and private documents, an authorization must be required from the company, of course. And concerning research data, once again, there is not a single rule. The data can be of different types. There may be confidentiality issues and copyright or contractual issues that prevent the creator of a dataset from publishing it. If the creator is a third party, then explain him your needs, what exactly you would like to reuse, and ask for permission. But if you are the creator, and if there is no reason to keep it confidential, you can deposit the dataset in an open repository. Do you want to modify the content before reusing it? There is a difference between redoing the content identically from raw data and modifying, adapting, or redrawing it. Since raw data are not protected by copyright, a figure or an image can be redone without permission from the raw data used to produce the original figure or image. Redrawing, modifying, or adapting does not imply only the reuse of the original work, but also the creation of a derivative work. In this case, the authorization from the right holder of the original work is required, unless the original content has been released under a Creative Commons license that enables the modifications. A little focus on thesis made by articles before concluding this coffee lecture. A thesis containing a compilation of articles published or submitted or accepted for publication in scientific journals is not plagiarism, but it requires to obtain the right to reproduce each article and to well contextualize the integration of the articles used in the thesis. You can see here an extract of the requirements defined by the doctoral school. Some supporting material created by the EPFL library. First, the wonderful Rational Bibliographic. The document that explains in detail what we have seen in this coffee lecture today, publish your thesis while respecting copyright rules, and also the six published support fast guides. Thank you so much for your attention. The published support team remains at your disposal for any question.